you know, 2002 to 2004, Olympic weightlifting was fairly unknown. It's, it's crazy how popular weightlifting is now. It's not really popular, but it used to be a dungeon sport. So um, I decided to stop playing football, and I would lifted weights for several years. And I um, decided when I was going home from school and not playing football anymore, it was so boring. I had always practiced. So I was looking for something to do. And I decided to try out velocity sports performance. It was kind of a concept that came along before CrossFit. Um, it just didn't really take off. It's kind of the softer version of CrossFit. And I met my weight, my first weightlifting coach there. His name's CJ Stockel. Um, and, and he started out a lot of lifters. And he, he's a really enthusiastic coach, great guy. And from day one, the first question he asked me was, how much do you back squat? And I had already back squatted like 500 pounds at that point as a 16 year old so he said oh geez you know you're with me from now on so nice. from that day forward we started training three four times a week every week for olympic lifting and um never really stopped unless i was in wrestling season well i i think um my original coaches i mean my coach in high school jamie glover he kind of developed my love for lifting weights not necessarily the olympic lifts but just being strong it was kind of a natural thing for me to want to do it it just felt good to lift more weight than the next person and um cj developed my original love for olympic weightlifting so when i started weightlifting with him he opened up my eyes to the fact that there was even a such sport and took me to school age nationals and junior nationals and, and a few other meets where i was able to see that there was other people who were you know stronger than me who were doing a sport that was based around lifting weights which is what i really enjoyed doing more than playing football or wrestling or any of that and then of course um see two other people paul fleschler i became a resident at the olympic training center in 2007 i lived there for a year and a half and originally i went out there for a training camp and i was paying my own way but i made a lot of progress out there and paul invited me to be a resident and him giving me that opportunity is probably the reason why i'm still in the sport because him seeing that potential in me made me want to stick with it even when for a couple years i mean i literally went two and a half years without a pr um partly because i was in college that was really strenuous academically but um still mentally to not pr for that long most people would have quit and then recently in the past couple of years i worked on my own for a little bit and then uh glenn i went out to cow strength with him for a month and i lived with him and um, he wanted me to move out there, but California was so expensive. So when they made the move to Muscle Driver, I've been training with him ever since. And he's given me the opportunity to train full time without working full time, which is probably the thing that's made the biggest difference once I was already at a certain level. Because you can get to that certain point with a stressful life, but to get past that and really break through to bigger numbers you really need to concentrate on this fully and and he gave me that opportunity and in, in muscle driver and glenn and so everyone had a different thing that influenced me or gave me a different piece so my original two coaches it was mostly just the love of the sport and then um paul and, and glenn giving me the uh, the confidence that I could really be one of the best weightlifters in the country and and Glenn for giving me like the full opportunity to kind of relieve the stress of a full-time job. Yeah, so when I first started with CJ, it was, it was three days a week and you started out slow. You don't just start out by training nine times a week. You pr you you can, but that's probably not the smartest strategy. So I built up over the course of 10 years, and now I'm lifting nine times a week. So twice, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and once, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Um, and I built up to that slowly. Um, 
you know, I was probably lifting weights five days a week, but three of those days were extremely hard when I was younger, and two of those days were more like agility days, where you might do some ladder drills, some stretching, and then some very, very light weightlifting with dumbbells. And then now, a day is going to consist of a lot of snatches and clean jerks on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then we're going to get most of our strength work Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Monday, Wednesday, Friday afternoons are always the heavy days in the snatch and clean jerk, the Olympic lifts. Um, and in the morning, we're going to spend the morning sessions on those days, generally warming up. Sometimes we do strength work, like squats and whatnot, but usually it's just going to be the goal is to wake up and warm up for the afternoon session. And the afternoon session, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, is where we view we get 80 plus percent of our gains on the snatch and clean and jerk now tuesday thursday saturday we're going to focus on squats push presses um and, and the squats and push presses are going to be heavy on those days and we're still we still might do a lift a fast lift but it's going to be lighter because we had just the session before that would have been heavy on on the lifts Um, right now I'm actually dealing with, with a back issue. So I pulled a muscle or, you know, you know, angered my muscles in my back, however you want to put it. And it's, it's hard. Um, how do I motivate myself though? I know I have end goals. I have these big long-term goals that I focus on. So I can't really, the, the biggest thing that I can do right now is to do as much as I can without relapsing. So I take it one step at a time, and then it also gives me more energy to focus on upper body work and, and things that I would normally probably be neglecting this time in the training cycle. So I try to look at it positively and find the things that I can do more of that it typically wouldn't be included in the training. For instance, if, if I tweak my back in training now, I go straight to the other side of the gym and do upper body work, whether that's bench press, dumbbell presses. Um, I might try to do some um, isolated hamstring work um, or something that I can do. And just I, I don't just sit down and waste the rest of the training session. There's always something to work on and always something that you can do. So I just try to focus on something different and try to see progress in that. Everyone um, has their different things on the team. We do have a full team, so everyone has specific things that they feel like help them. Um, but just for the average day, recovery, for the most part, is n over 90% your sleep, nutrition, and um and training so you know those those three things and just living a stress-free life so things that you can do without spending a lot of money you have to eat anyways so try to eat quality foods i just recently started working with a nutritionist that seemed to help a lot um i make sure i get eight hours of sleep a night so that's not an option for some people but you want to maximize your sleep that is so important you cannot get in an ice bath and make up for not sleeping eight hours you know that's the icing on the cake the cake is the sleep and nutrition and of course just staying positive and happy um, if you are not happy if you're depressed it is impossible to lift weights you have to be very motivated to lift weights and if life outside of the gym is extremely stressful, the last thing you want to do is pick up something heavy because you already have the world on your shoulders at home, you know? So that's like 90% of it. Of course, the other 10% of it is important too, but I like to stress to people that those major things should come first because if you're neglecting any of those, the other stuff is not going to make up for it. Now, the other stuff, of course, I, I work with a chiropractor once a week. He gives me an adjustment. Um stretches me out that kind of thing right now my buddy uh and one of the new guys on the team 
uh, Stephen Brown. He has a, ten, a TENS unit, which is basically like an electric stem. And I've been using that on my back. I get, get a massage about once a week. And, um, of course, a cold plunge is nice. We, we currently don't have one, but we're looking into it. Something that we want to do for the team. But that stuff definitely helps. But you have to have that aha moment that the 90% category comes first. Well, I, um, I try to keep myself busy, for one. Um, there's so many things that you can learn and do in the world. I mean, it's, it's honestly like, for instance, I am learning how to play guitar. I'm never going to be great at guitar, but it is a ton of fun to learn and get better at it. And that's one of the reasons why we did the interview right now is because in an hour I'm going to my guitar lesson. So that's something new that I picked up this year, so in January. So I've been doing it about five months. I'm still terrible at it, but it's a great time to go work with the teacher. And um, it also has taught me a lot about weightlifting, just patience. Because I've been doing weightlifting so long and patience with, with clients because when I'm the new guy working with this professional guitar player, He's amazing. I'm like, how? There's no way I could ever do that. But some people view snatching 150, 155 kilos as being impossible. And so I gain an insight into their mindset when they're working with me sometimes. And that's helped me in a lot of different ways. Um, I also read a lot. I kind of go in spurts with reading, but I think reading is a lot of fun. I try to get out in the sun. I mean, vitamin D is really important for your, just your health and happiness, and people overlook it. We sit inside all the time. And I try to work with clients at, with weightlifting because I have an online team that I that I program for and coach, and it's, it's just fun to see people excel. And I coach a, a few classes here in Charlotte.